Welcome again to Praise and Worship Service at Oakwood Church of God in Christ, located at 4712 North Albury Road, Godfrey, Illinois. If you're ever in the Alton Godfrey area and looking for a church home, the doors of Oakwood are always open. My scripture tonight comes from 1 John 5, 4 through 5, and it reads, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Saints, Jesus tells us in Luke 10 and 18 that he beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Saints, Jesus was victorious over Satan. We too can be victorious over Satan. We can have faith to stand against Satan's attacks, and we can win. We don't have to be defeated. We don't have to be oppressed. So now, how do we live a victorious life? That's my message for this evening living a victorious life. How can we battle against Satan forces and realize that the peace of God wants us to have? As believers, we have come to the point of realization that there is a battle going on for our souls because, saints, we are in a spiritual war. But God has already provided the path to our ultimate victory. Through Jesus and shedding of his blood, by which we have already obtained grace and mercy. Saints, we are overcomers. The first principle to receiving a victory from God is to understand that he's already won. Saints, he has already won. The battle has already been fought and he has already won. If we could only stand that, we have the victory also. Yes, we have overcome. And yes, sometimes the battle may be tough sometimes. But we know Christ told us to take up our cross and follow him. And as we do this, we receive the rewards of victory in Jesus Christ. Now, saints, I want to tell you, God is omnipresent, meaning he is in all places at all times. He is ever present. He neither comes nor goes. Jehovah Shammah means that the Lord is there. The Lord is ever present. Now, let me tell you that God is never on his way because he is already there. He's in your past. He's right here with you now, and he will be there in your future. He was there yesterday. He's here today, and he will be there forevermore. God is not limited to our physical location like us. He is not restricted by time, nor is he tied down to, a, to any one place. Now, some people might say that they're on their way. But God is always there. Whatever it is that you're trying to get to, God is already there. Saints, David said in Psalms 139, 7 through 10, whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I have sinned up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, Thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Saints, the word powerful doesn't even begin to describe our God. Don't ever underestimate him. Just because your situation right now looks bad 
Don't think the Lord is absent in the midst of your trials. Saints, God was there in the lion's den, a place where many thought Daniel had come face to face with his end. But God said no. One day, God decided to demonstrate that he is there and how powerful he was because he sent rain, raining down from heaven to answer Elijah's prayer. He was there when the Red Sea turned into a highway. He was there. Saints, he was there when I was going through pain for a whole year with my hips. He was there with me in the operating room. He was there with me in the recovery room. And he was there when he took me on home to do my therapy. What am I saying? God is omnipresent. He was there at the beginning of time. He is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. He was there before you and I was even formed in our mother's womb. He is Jehovah Shammah. He is present in all locations at all times in all ways. Today, let me tell you that God is with you. He'll never leave you. In Joshua 1 and 9, it says, have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, wheresoever thou goest. He's there. He's there to lead you to a clear path for you, to heal you. He's there when you need that miracle. Now, it may not be in your own time, but it is in his perfect time. When you need peace, he's there. When you need comfort or strength, he is there to give you just that. The truth of the matter is, most of the time, God is waiting on us. He's waiting on us to believe and lift up our faith. He wants us to Trust him fully, completely, totally. You can come to Jesus anywhere, anytime. If you, if you have heavy burdens, Jesus said, come to me, all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Saints, he can give you rest. He can give you peace. He can make you whole. We don't have to be at any special place or perform any sacred special rituals. He can meet a need even in the middle of a crowd. He can pay attention to someone on the side of a dusty road. And saints, he doesn't have to stop seeing about me when he sees about you. He can be stopped by the smallest touch of sincere faith. If only we touch the hem of his garment. So since in your darkest hours, those moments where you pray and say, God, I need a miracle now. When you need healing, when you need him to direct your children, when your marriage has been going bad for a long time and you think it's hit rock bottom, believe and be confident that the Lord will turn things around. Believe that if God can part the Red Sea for Moses, if he can take Joseph from the prison to the palace, if he can save the three Hebrew boys from the fiery furnace, if he can heal the woman with the issues of blood for 12 years, then believe that God can come through for you in any situation. Saints, I urge you to stand on the promise of Psalms 46 verse 1 which says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. We can also stand on Proverbs 18 and 10, which says, if you tell that the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteousness run into it and are safe. Saints, there is safety and protection in the Lord's tower. 
Now, I think the truth is, when we are in the middle of a great of a great hardship, we don't just begin to think, well, God is refining me, and I believe I'll come out a better person. No, that is not where our thoughts go. But as believers, maybe that's what we should think. Maybe we're, that's where our mind should go. We all know the story of Job. He held on through and persevered through all that suffering. He came out victorious. Say, we can too. Most people in a, in a time of struggle, in a time of despair, in, a, in the seasons of the trial, will ask God to rescue them. They will ask God to deliver them. But let me, let me ask you something. What happens when you ask God to take this problem or situation away and he doesn't? What happens when you told the mountain to move and it doesn't? What now? Saints, I like to submit to you that during these times, when troubles just don't go away, when the rain just doesn't stop, that our prayers actually should be, Lord, go through this storm with me. Give me the strength to face these problems. That's what it should be. In Hebrews 10, 35 and 36, it reads, do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. Saints, we need to receive his promises. That's what David found out. He tells us there was a time when he was struggling. In Psalms 55, he writes, fear and trembling overwhelm me, and I can't stop shaking. Morning, noon, and night, I cry out in my distress, and the Lord hears my voice. Then David said, this can, this can also be our experience. At the end of the psalm, he writes, give your burdens to the Lord, and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. Saints, we need to hold on to this promise. God will never let you slip. What am I saying? Elder Parker is saying that Lord Jesus is king, and he invites you to come to him for rest. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, starting at verse 1, lay, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy what was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, while we don't like troubles, and well, I know I don't, I can speak for myself, Troubles can be a blessing for believers. You see, God used trouble sometimes to remind us that he is the deliverer. He is the savior. He is our hope and rescue. God is faithful to empower us to stand strong and be victorious and not be defeated. Saints, I ask you to believe and be victorious because we are overcomers. May God bless you. Now, I never want to leave the presence of the Lord without giving everyone the opportunity to give your life to Christ. If this message tonight has touched your heart and you are ready to give your life to the Lord, he is more than ready to receive you. Because in Romans 10 and 9, it says, if we openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you will, repeat after me. Lord, I come to you a willing vessel. 
confessing all my sins. I receive you into my life and make you my Lord and Savior. I cancel every assignment of the enemy and I declare my life will never be the same again. Thank you, God. I am saved in Jesus' name. Amen. If you, if you said that and believed it, you are saved. Now, saints, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious upon thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Until next time, saints, be blessed.